Hello, it's Ian Jameson here again. It's uh, nice to be able to have this time with you. Um, I hope that uh, over the next few weeks or months, depending on how long this situation goes on for, to be able to perhaps do a little devotional message every second day or so. Uh, so it's nice to be able to open God's word with you and uh, just wish that I could see you, of course, and have fellowship. Um, but it's so wonderful, isn't it, to have these uh, ways of keeping in touch with each other. We're living in a, a time of real uncertainty, aren't we? Um, and none of us can see clearly the future. Um, of course, the Bible lays out for us God's glorious future uh, for this world, for the church, for the nation of Israel. And uh, it's wonderful to be able to have this rock of certainty that we find in God's word. But I'd like to be able to turn you, um, if you will, to First John, to the epistle of First John. And uh, I'd like to draw your attention to a word that we find a number of times used um, in First John. It's a word, um, epiphanos. Epiphanos, that's the Greek word. And what it means is to appear. It's the word that we get epiphany from, and fantasy, and phantom, and words like that about things which appear. And uh, it's used at the beginning and at the end, and then in a middle section of the epistle. So just look with me at First John chapter 1 and verses 1 and 2, this fantastic beginning to the epistle. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. The life was made manifest and we have seen it and testified to it and proclaimed to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. These two uses of the phrase made manifest, that's this word epiphanos. The life was made manifest, made manifest to us. Uh, and what we're talking about here is the life. The life, who is the life? Well, John in his gospel tells us that that life was the light of men, that this was Jesus Christ, our saviour. And that's who we're thinking about today. You know, in these times of difficulty, we need to keep our eyes focused on him. Um, so many things around us could distract us, but how wonderful it would be if during this time, when we have more time on our hands, that we can spend time in his word and that we can spend time meditating on our saviour and having our hearts and minds occupied with him rather than with the troubles around us. So in First John chapter 1 we find that the life was made manifest, appeared, epiphanos. And then at the other end of the epistle, chapter 4, uh, we find another use of this word. Verse 8, chapter 4, verse 8. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. In this the love of God was made manifest among us that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him so not only has life been made manifest but love has been ma made manifest all in the one person all in Jesus Christ our saviour but then I'd like you to turn with me to the second chapter the second chapter and right at the end of the second chapter and we'll read into the third first John chapter 2 and verse 28 uh, and we're going to read down to chapter 3 and verse 3. Familiar verses to many of us. Wonderful verses. And we move through these verses in a pattern of thinking about the future, thinking about the present, and then thinking about the future again. We're thinking about the loyalty of the believer, the longings of the believer, and the likeness of the believer. So first of all, about the loyalty of the believer. And now, little children, abide in him, remain in him, that's in Christ, so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink from him in shame at his coming. I hope we're thinking about the coming of the Lord Jesus. I hope that's something that's occupying our thoughts in these days. If you know that he is righteous, which we do, we know that the Lord is righteous, don't we? You may be sure that everyone who practices righteousness has been born of him. We're to abide in Christ. We are to abide in him. He keeps us. His keeping power sustains us. And he is the one who has promised never to leave us nor forsake us. And yet it's our privilege to have the help of the Holy Spirit and the wonderful word of God uh, to abide in Christ, to remain in him, to keep our hearts and our minds focused on him, to abide in him. And then the verses move into the presence. We've thought about the coming of the Lord, which we'll think about in, in a moment again. But now the present. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. And so we are. 
The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. What did this writer John say in his gospel in chapter 1 again? He said, he came unto his own and his own received him not. We are not accepted. Our message is not accepted in this world. That's why one of the reasons we love Christian fellowship to be together, to be with others who are like minded, who share the same convictions and beliefs that we do. And yet in these days where we're not um, able to have that in a physical sense, it's all the more important that we have that sense of fellowship together because we live in a world which does not accept us. We live in the day of Christ's rejection. Our Lord is now rejected and by the world disowned, by the many still neglected and by the few enthroned. But it's our privilege to be part of that few. Verse 2. Beloved, we are God's children now. That's what we are in the present. And what we will be, now the future, what we will be, has not yet appeared, appeared, made, been made manifest, epiphanos. What we will be, our glorified state in the future, has not yet appeared. None of us, this side of the rapture, this side of eternity, this side of death, none of us know what we will be in the future. So we think about the, the loyalty of the believer, abide in him. We think about the longings of the believer we want to be with him and what we will be has not yet appeared we live in this in-between period and we live in a period of difficulty and waiting and then the future again but but we know that when he appears when christ appears we shall be like him what a stunning truth because we shall see him as he is we shall see him as he is you know, there are people who will watch this video, I'm sure, who have known and loved the Lord Jesus Christ for decades, perhaps, and have never seen him. And none of us have. None of us have. We have not seen the Lord Jesus Christ with our physical eyes, and yet all of us have had him revealed to our hearts by the Holy Spirit through his word. And it's just wonderful to know him, isn't it? Uh, and yet we've never seen him. And one day we will see him for the first time. What an amazing thing that will be. You know, we think of Peter, James and John on the Mount of Transfiguration. They saw something of the glory of the Lord. Not the fullness of his glory. I don't think they would have survived it. But they saw something of his glory and they were never the same again. How much more will it be for us that when we see him, that experience of seeing him will be so transformative that we will never be the same again. Our bodies will be made new and we will be with him. Verse 3, everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. You know, as we occupy our minds, hopefully, a bit more these days with the second coming of the Lord Jesus, it's a purifying truth, something which is purifying, because it changes our walk before the Lord with the, the readiness, um, the reality of his soon return. It changes our work for him, as we know that the day will come when we have to give an account of what we have done, the deeds we have done in the body, and then also it changes our witness, the urgency of reaching those around us with the gospel. Um, you know, there's a limit, of course, physically to what we can do in these days to reach the lost with the gospel, but how urgent it is, how urgent it is that they should come to know him uh, and be faced with the gospel of the Lord Jesus. So I hope these words have been an encouragement to you. Uh, life has appeared, light has appeared, love has appeared. And we have these longings. We want to be loyal uh, to the Lord Jesus and abide in him. We long to see him one day. Uh, but also we have this wonderful privilege uh, of this likeness to come in the future. What a prospect that is uh, for us as believers in the Lord Jesus. I hope that we can see each other soon and renew fellowship. And in the meantime, um, I hope that these uh, little devotional thoughts, um, as in God's will, um, I do more in the future, um, that there'll be an encouragement to your hearts. Amen.